Hello friends, this video on respiration in plants part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. And with step 7, again my starting material will be the product which was formed in step 6. So the starting material becomes 1,3-biphosphoglycerate. And the enzyme here is phosphoglycerokinase. So again we have a kinase enzyme. So what does this kinase enzyme do? It jitters phosphorylation exactly. So till now we talked about, we looked at three types of enzymes. One is kinase, one is isomerase and the third one was hydrogenase. So whenever it is a kinase, it does phosphorylation. Whenever it is an isomerase, it converts the compound to its isomer. Whenever it is a hydrogenase, it does something related to oxidation reduction. Okay, so I'm just giving you tips to remember which enzyme participates in which step. So the product which is formed here is 3-phosphoglycerate. So again you see one phosphate group has been removed because here the starting material had biphosphate and the product has just one phosphate. So that bi is gone, that means the one phosphate group is gone. So let us see what happens here. So in this case basically in 1,3-biphosphoglycerate you we have 3 carbon and 2 phosphate group at 1 and 3 positions. So this is the starting material. So when the enzyme acts on this, what it does is enzyme transfers 1 phosphate group from here and gives that phosphate group to ADP. So ADP is also found in the cytosol that is adenosine diphosphate. So one phosph the enzyme will take snatch one phosphate from here and it will transfer it to ADP. So ADP will get one more phosphate. So from di it will become tri. So it becomes ATP. And what will happen to this molecule? This molecule will only have one phosphate group. So it will become the third position phosphate group will be retained. That is why the name is 3-phosphoglycerate. So 3-phosphoglycerate will be formed. So here another interesting thing to be noted is that ATP is produced in this step. Now again here also in, in step 6, the product was two molecules of biphosphoglycerate. So this step will get repeated for both the molecules of biphosphoglycerate. Therefore, two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate will be formed. Again, two molecules of ATP will be formed because this entire step will get repeated twice. Let us look at step 8. So here the starting material will be 3-phosphoglycerate which was formed in step 7 and the enzyme which will act here is phosphoglyceromutase. So here the enzyme is phosphoglyceromutase and the product which is formed is 2-phosphoglycerate. So just by looking at the starting material and the product you can just see that this enzyme is not doing anything just relocating the phosphate group from the third carbon to the second carbon that's it so what's happening is first it was 3 phosphoglycerate so that is the phosphate group was attached to the third carbon now by but this enzyme acts on it and it shifts the phosphate group from third carbon to the second carbon so that's all it does so it becomes 2 phosphoglycerate that's all so here two molecules of 2-phosphoglycerate are formed. Again, please note that everywhere after step 5, two molecules are being formed. That is because in the, sub, in the previous step, two molecules of the product was formed. So when you have two molecules of the starting material, the entire step will take place twice, once for each molecule. Therefore, two molecules of the product will be formed. So the next step, that is step 9, here the starting material will be 2-phosphoglycerate that is the product which was formed in step 8 and the enzyme which will act here is enolase and this enzyme will give rise to the product PEP that is phosphoenol pyruvic acid. So how will this form? So let us have a quick look. So we had 2-phosphoglycerate. So the exact structure of 2-phosphoglycerate looks somewhat like this. So we have 3 carbon atoms 
And on the second carbon, we have the phosphate group. So if you talk about the other bonds which we have to the carbon, this is how it looks like. So this is how 2-phosphoglycerate looks like. Now in this step, the enzyme enolase causes hydrolysis. What is hydrolysis? That is removal of H2O. So one molecule of H2O will be removed from here. So how do we remove that H2O? Let us suppose you remove this OH and you remove this H. So by action of this enzyme, one H2O is removed. So if you remove this H and this OH, so H2O is removed. So what will, what will you be left with? You will be left with something like this. This, there will be a double bond because this H is going, this OH is going. So a double bond will develop between both the carbon atoms. And this will be H2. And this is nothing but PEP, that is phosphoenol pyruvic acid. So the starting material was 2-phosphoglycerate, but by the process of hydrolysis. This process is called hydrolysis. Hydro means water, lysis means breakdown. So if you take out water or if you cut down water from a molecule, we say that hydrolysis has happened. So there is again this step, step will also get repeated two times. So as a result, two molecules of phosphoenol pyruvic acid will be formed and also two water molecules will be formed because in each step one water molecule will be released. So two molecules of water are also released here. Let us now look at the last step that is the 10th step of glycolysis. Here the starting material will be PEP that is phosphoenol pyruvic acid. And the enzyme is pyruvate kinase. So again, you have a kinase enzyme. So wherever you have kinase, it has something to do with phosphorylation. Let's see what happens. And the product is pyruvic acid. So this was our aim in glycolysis. I told you, right? What is glycolysis? Conversion of glucose, which is a six carbon compound, into two molecules of a three carbon compound, that is pyruvic acid. So that's what is happening in step 10. So pyruvic acid is going to get formed. So now, so now we had PEP, that is phosphoenol pyruvate. And the molecular formula was C3H3O3. P1. This is how the molecular formula of phosphoenol pyruvate was. So if you try to draw it, it would be something like this. Three carbon atoms and one phosphate group. Now this under the action of the enzyme pyruvate kinase. What happens? It trans this enzyme will transfer a phosphate ion from this compound to ADP. So again, diphosphate is present in the cytosol. So this phosphate group will be snatched from this compound that is PEP and it will be transferred to ADP. So ADP will become tri that is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And we will be left with the molecular formula C3H4O3. And this is nothing but pyruvic acid or pyruvate, whatever you call it. So the final result is that and again in this step also ATP molecules are produced. So if you see two molecules of pyruvic acid are formed because the, this step will occur twice and also two molecules of ATP are also released in this step. Right. So that's how we uh, end our stepwise discussion of glycolysis. So we saw that out of these 10 steps, the, my, our initial uh, starting material was glucose and our final product was pyruvic acid. But if you look at all the 10 steps, you see that there were so many intermediate compounds which were formed. Also in different steps, in some steps ATP was utilized, in some steps ATP was uh, formed, in some steps NADH was formed. So that means energy was also released in quite a number of steps out of these 10 steps. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.